Teachers, in this video I'm going to show you how you can utilize My School Online course material in your brick and mortar school class. Now to do this, you want to go into ClassLink. I'm in my ClassLink here, and you're looking for the Edgenuity Educators app. It's right here. This is what it looks like. But if you didn't see it, you could always go up to the top and search by typing in Edgenuity. And there you see Edgenuity Educators, and you can click on that and it'll take you into your Edgenuity account. Now when you get in here, the first thing you want to do is make sure that it is showing you correctly. So in the top right hand portion, you'll see your name and below that you'll see your current school. This is the school that you will be teaching your brick and mortar class at. For example, I'm at Baker Middle School. If for some reason this school is not correct for you, that would be just a quick email to the ClassLink Help Desk, and we can make sure that that is corrected for you. So when you get into your brick and mortar school in Edgenuity, to see the courses that are available to you, just go over to the Courses tab here, and you click on Manage Courses. That's going to bring up all the courses that are associated with your school, in this particular case, Baker Middle School. And I want to talk about the two different types of courses that you will see. For example, uh, you can see that for Introductory Art History, there's a non-CR version, and then there's a CR 2020-2021 listing here. The non-CR version is the My School Online course that is associated with your brick and mortar school. The CR 2020-2021 course that actually is the credit recovery course that a student would be taking if they were having to make up a course in a credit recovery program. So the ones that you're going to want to utilize in your class are the non-CR version, this version of My School Online. These are the same courses that are in My School Online with one exception. These courses are open for movement. That means that students do not have to go in any particular order. So you can assign them or show them anything in this course and they would not have had to do what was previously assigned in the course for them to see it. So this course is completely open for movement. So for example, let's say that I am a world history teacher in mid or civics teacher in middle school and I want to show I want to look and see what I, what's available to me as a civics teacher. So I'm going to hit filter and I'm going to go subject, social studies, and I'm going to go grade seventh. And that's going to bring up all of the seventh grade social studies courses that are available to me at Baker Middle School. You see there's civics. Now the A and the B, that's just first semester and second semester. You see there's the non-CR, then there's the CR, and there's also the advanced in the non-CR version. But let's say that I'm going to be teaching Civics A, and I want to see what's available. To do that, I just click on the box next to my Civics non-CR version, first semester. And what I'm looking for is possibly here in the more, because I'm looking for view course structure. I'm going to click on this, and this is going to bring up the structure of the course. All of these are the different lessons and assignments that are associated with the first semester civics course, and they're all clickable. For example, let's say I want to go into types of government. I could click on that, and it's going to tell me the lesson objectives. I could click on the vocabulary, and it's going to show me all of the vocabulary for that particular lesson. Now, let's say I want to show the direct instruction in my class. It gives you the running time and if you click on the direct instruction you could project this in your class. For example, Hi, I'm Rob Quinn. Before I start this lesson, let me tell you you're going to see some words that are highlighted or bolded. The video that students would be going through in the My School Online course, you could project that in your classroom and you could have your students go through that. So that's just one way you can do it. Another thing that you can do is you can assign these assignments to your students. For example, let's say that you wanted to assign types of government right here to all of your students in your civics first semester class. You can do that by creating a group 
adding your students to the group, and then adding this course to that group. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, but I'm going to go sh and show you how quickly you can do that. To do that, you want to go into Students, and you want to go to Manage User Groups. When you do this, it's going to bring up all of the groups that you've created. For example, I've not created any here. So if I want to create a group for my class to uh, be able to see this material, I'm going to go to Add New Group, and I can name this anything I want. I want to name it something that I will definitely know what it is. So I'm going to call it McSween's Second Period Civics. And definition, uh, brick and mortar civics. And you can call this whatever you want. It's just uh, for you to, yeah, if I could type correctly, it's just for you to know what it is. I'm going to click Save. And it says, ah, oh, the user group's been added. And you'll see there's now my user group, McSween Second Period Civics. If I click on that, I would see all the students that were assigned. Well, right now they're not assigned. So I'm going to show you how to assign students to your group. Now, the first thing I'd like you to do is click this X next to groups here that has your group that you just created. Because if you leave that on, it will only show the students that are in that group which is great if you've already added students, but if you haven't, it won't show anybody. So I'm going to click that off, and now it's going to bring up all of the students that are associated with Baker Middle School, or you could just go up here to Students and click on Manage Students. It brings you to the same spot. I, I've added four students here to Baker Middle School, and I can add them a couple of ways. I can search for them, for example, let's say I want to add Mr. Dustin Keith to my class. I could just click the box next to his name and I could add him to my group right here. Let's put add group and it's going to bring up all the groups I've created. If I had more than just my second period, it'd have them. And to add him to my group, I just click the box next to his name and then I click the plus symbol and it says you, the student you selected has been submitted to receive the change, add to groups. So he's now been added to my group. Now, I can also add multiple students to my groups. So to do this, I'll just get rid of that. And it's going to bring up all the students. And I can just click next to multiple names. Now, I've already added Dustin, but let's say I want to add all three of these to my group as well. I do it the same way. Add to groups. Click on the group I want to add them to and click the plus symbol. These three students have been add, selected to add to groups. So now I can go back to manage user groups. And I now click on my, my see my civics class and there are my students. So I've now created my group and I've added students to my group. I would recommend to make it easier if you have your class role available, you can just either type them in. It's an alphabetical list, but you can type in their last name or whatever to, to make it quicker for you. Now, the next thing is I want to add a course to my group. So this way I don't have to add that course to each individual student. So if I want to add civics first semester to my group, I can do that as opposed to adding it to every single student. So when I do this, every student that I've assigned to my group will show civics first semester. To do that, I want to, again, I want to go back to manage user groups. I want to click the box. I click on the group right there. And I'm going to click all of the names by clicking the box next to name. And this will bring up all of the students. Now, if I've got more than on one page, like if I have 125 students, which I probably don't have that many, but if I've got 30, I would just click Select All there. That way you know you're getting them all. And then I want to click Enroll in Course. And I want to go again, let's see, it's going to be seventh grade. And subject is Social Studies just to make it easier for me. And there is my civics non-CR first semester. Check the box next to that. 
click Enroll, and it does tell me that you've selected four students to enroll in one course. So I'm going to click Enroll, and they've now been enrolled. Now, if I want to double check to see if they're actually in there, I could click on, for example, Bill Hagen's name, and it now shows me that he is enrolled in Civics A non-CR version. So that means, and let's go back to the Manage Courses here, and go back into our civics lesson that we were looking at, which is the view course structure. If I wanted to assign him under types of government direct instruction, I could tell him to do that. Now, what's he going to see when he looks at that? To see what he sees so that you can uh, view what the, what the student's going through, you have the ability as a brick and mortar teacher through Ingenuity to impersonate the students. To do that, again, you want to go back to your user group. You want to click on that user group. And we were using Mr. Hagen, so I want to click the box next to his name. And you're looking for impersonate. Now, most of the time it's going to be under the More and then under the Account Security section. And there it is right there, Impersonate. When you do this, it's going to bring up a warning that's saying, hey, you're entering an impersonation session and actions will be logged. This is just so that in case we have to go back and see who was logged in as a student at a particular time or date, we have that action logged here. So I'm going to hit continue. And now I am impersonating Mr. Hagen. And there is the civics course. Now to see the assignment from his point of view that I have given him, I don't want to click on Next Activity because that will take me to the very first activity in the course. Because this course is open, what I want to click on is the course tile here. So I'm going to click on the actual course name, and it's going to bring up this course map. So there's the uh, types of government and direct instruction. Now to view what he sees, all I have to do is click on direct instruction. There's types of government, and the video is loading, Hi, I'm Rob and you see it's the same video that we were that I showed you how to, to project in class early. So that's what the student sees. So you again, you can see what the student sees. Now I'm going to end the impersonation session, and it's going to take me back as me, and there I am. I'm now as me here. Now. If I want to see how students did or are doing in a course that I've assigned them, I have the ability to run a report. Now, you may or may not want to do this. You may want to assign it just so students can, can keep up with the material in class in addition to what you're already doing. But you do have the ability to run the report and see how they've done on that assignment. So to do that, I'm going to go to Reports, and I want to look at Group Progress. When I do that, it's going to bring up this Group Progress Overview. Uh, start date, that should be the date that I assigned it. And you have a range of dates in case you can't remember when you officially signed it. And then the end date, uh, if you know when that is. You don't have to put anything in the end date if you want to. Groups, I want to make sure that my group is picked. Uh, so if I've got more than one period that I'm looking at, I could choose each individual one, but I'm going to cl ch click on the period that I assigned to, and then uh, it's an active course. I just want my active students. If I had a student who was no longer active, I could click on all students and it would bring up any inactive students that were previously assigned to my course. So I'm going to click search, and it's now going to bring up all the students, and if they had actually completed anything, it would be grades there for them as well. So in this video, I've shown you how through ClassLink, you can access My School Online courses by going into Edgenuity. And you can use those courses a couple of ways in your classroom. You can use the material to, say, project in a lesson or go over in a lesson, or you can create a group and then assign that lesson to your group after hours. So that's what we've done in this video. And I thank you for your time and have a great day.